Well, thanks a lot, Sarah, for that introduction, and thank you, Matthew, for a brilliant presentation. So, as long as I can remember, since I was a little child, child I have been dreaming of making a difference to the world, making the world a better place. And I do understand that these 15 minutes that has been given to me here won't change the world, perhaps, but hopefully I can inspire some of you out here in the audience to make a change within your business. Uh, as Sarah said, we are Synca BIM, and we work as a partner in BIM and digitalization of the built environment. This, this is our challenge. This is our challenge locally here in Sweden. We have one of the world's highest construction costs, and we are 66% higher than the average in the European Union. And I, I think we have spoke a lot by these numbers earlier today, so I don't need to go in any deeper to this. But in, in a global state, this, this is very short-term thinking. I think all our environmental problems that we have in the world, BIM will be a very important part of the solution to that as well. I would like to start off by defining BIM as I see it. It's, it's a little bit bold to defining BIM in this room, but it's not a definition. But it's important uh, for me uh, to make you to understand what I mean by BIM. So I used to say that BIM is an information model which contains data about a facility's whole life cycle from design to demolition. And that is a quite broad definition of the acronym BIM. But with that definition, you can apply BIM to every stage, every process of a building's life cycle. And that's what we are trying to do. So what we have done at our company, this is, we have created four more acronyms to make it simpler. I don't know if that's... Uh, this is not correct. We call them PIM, DIM, SIM, and FIM. And, di and this is just reflecting our business. This is our way of explaining BIM to our different clients, because our different clients have very different needs in all these stages. So often you talk about BIM as this magical solution that will uh, solve uh, every of your problems. But what we have seen is that it's so hard for our clients to understand wh what, what is BIM, wh what does it mean? Is it Revit? Is it Solibri? Is it a BIM object? What is BIM? So we tried to divide it a little bit. So I'm just briefly going to explain the model for you so you get make a sense of this. So at the first stage to the left, to your left, we have the program information model. This is the very early stage of a building conceptual design. It's all about volumes, areas, numbers, ratios, making business decisions. We have developed a tool in this stage of the process, I think, that is running as a knowledge base right now for 30 billion kroners of investment. So there's a lot of money in that stage. The second stage is the design phase, which we call design information model. And here it's all about coordination. Coordination of the project management team, the design team, and coordination with the construction guys, with the contractors. The third stage is the construction information model. That is the kind of information model that we use on the construction sites together with our large entrepreneurs in Sweden today. And I think, as we mentioned a little bit before, this is the stage, the construction if model stage is probably the stage where we need to make the most changes within, within our existing processes. We need to make the construction sites turn into assembly lines. And there's a, several of reasons why we haven't come any further with this, but I won't go into that. I will focus on the final stage which closes the life cycle of a building, and that's what we call facility information model. And I will go through how we as a company uh, entered that stage, because three years ago we, we barely knew what we, we didn't know what facility information model was, and we barely knew what operations and maintenance was for us. So we started off three years ago with the why. Why, why do we want to enter this stage? Of course, we want to enter it because 
it's closing the life cycle. But we came out with these three lines that, that was very clear to me. Humans spend 90% of their time indoors. Imagine if we, by BIM, could reach out to all these people. We build structures that will last for 100 years or longer. Imagine if we, by BIM, could make those structures sustainable over time in the digital landscape. And also, this is the stage where the most money is being spent in a building's life cycle. So this is a very clear business case to me. I, I see tremendous opportunities to enter this stage. I would like to, to every one of you to take a second and reflect how these three facts will affect your business in the future. I know what I like to see. I would like to see architects who start delivering, by BIM, delivering evidence-based architecture. I would like to see product developers, which by BIM estimates the cost in the maintenance and operation stage so that they can make better investments in the early stages. I also would like to see manufacturers, suppliers, who are taking responsibility for the whole life cycle of their products and start delivering digital, digital twins and also delivering asset as a service. That's a business model you probably should look into. So I actually found this, this picture in my notes. Uh, this was some of the workshop material we made three years ago, setting this uh, business area for, uh, for our sake. And this is, it's, it's a little bit silly, but it's, it's super funny to see how we didn't know what to do, uh, and the subject of this workshop was, okay, let's form, let's form Synca BIM, and we were, I think, seven people. So, and the subject was to make newspaper headlines. What will we do in three years? What are our goals? How do we get there? So, and this is what we came out with. To your left, you have Synca BIM makes BIM in facility management a reality, and to your right, you have the finally meet the modern facility management father or something like that. I'll get back to the vision because we, we, we meet a lot of organizations who want to digitalize, but they haven't got their vision and they haven't got their management, haven't got their visions clear why they want to do something. So we started looking at the challenges and these challenges are quite core to entering the BIM and facility management stake. The number one, the number one challenge is validate data and keeping it up to date. That's why we haven't succeeded with BIM and facility management, because it's so hard keeping data up to date. It's really simple today, making a BIM model in Revit, Archicad, or whatever, of this whole structure, this building. But it's very hard to keeping it up to date. I mean, already in an hour, or this afternoon, or tomorrow, things will start to happen with the building. We also realized that we, we, need to, we need to map a huge amount of existing data. I mean, if you look outside this world, 99% of the structures are already built. So we need to take, uh, take a look at how, how do we solve existing structures today. We also needed to make data searchable. I would say that we have a lot of data today in the facility management, but we use only a fraction because it's not searchable. We also needed to make a system that is user-friendly for the big mass. I mean, BIM, for BIM isn't a tool for the contractor. It isn't a tool for the designer. It's, it's a strategy how you use information. So BIM and facility management should be used by the tenants, by the visitors. You should be uh, using BIM here today to find this room. You should use BIM today when you're buying coffee down here. BIM is an information tool within all the sectors of the management. And then we have the future-proofing. And it's very hard to tell what's future-proof. If you go 20 years back in time, uh, it was hard to predict what, uh, what was future-proof today. But 
at least we know what we are not going to do. We are not going to lock in information in, in small systems and proprietary formats. So looking at these challenges, uh, we thought, oh, wait, well, quite easy to enter this market. Let's, let's, find out, let's find the best FM system in the whole world. And Daniel, a guy who has done his PhD in beaming facility management, that it happens to be working at us. He traveled around and was searching for the best facility management system. And quite fast, we, we found out there was no such system. So we had to zoom out a little bit more and looked what we really needed. And we really need this. We need a Google plus a Google Maps in the facility management to, make, to map large amounts of data, make it searchable, and make all the community contributing with data. So part of the solution became photosc photoscan and photogrammetry, as we have seen and heard of today. We, we combine this with the BIM models. And really, one thing we need to get clear with the BIM models, if we talk Revit or ArchiCAD, they aren't good at containing a lot of information. So we said that the BIM models are only good creating an ID, giving us a quantity, and giving us a placement. The rest should we work in within external databases. So we use BIM object as a supplier database for product data connected to the BIM models, connected to the scan models. We also set up a database for maintenance and operations, the specific data about an object which is not supplier data. This connected with real-time information, the IoT platform. And then we have the digital twin. So I would like to show you just a short clip of the front end of the result that we have done together with Akademiska Hus in this case, a property owner in Sweden. And we have, I think we have seven, eight or nine property owners that are doing this right now. We heard Ika and Jonas here before. And here you got your map, your 2D annotation map, and then you have your 3D, uh, 3D model with real time rendering as you can walk around in. And it's all searchable. So we search for asset. We search for points of interest in this model. So for example, if we're looking into an HVAC system that needs maintenance, then we search for the HVAC system. Gets to that object. On your left, you have all the asset information. In this case, we use BIM object as the platform in the ecosystem to, to maintain the product data because then the data comes directly from the supplier and not from the real estate owner. So and by doing this, the suppliers can update data afterwards, and we still get that data to the real estate owner. So and we, can, we can store any type of media in this object. We have instruction videos of how the HVAC system works. We have the IoT system, we have the SCADA system for, for control and maintenance. So this is just a front-end layer of all the BIM that is in the background. And exactly as in Google, Google Maps, we also have the wayfinding. So when inside you are searching for an information point, I need to get to the information desk, or you're searching for how to get to the coffee bar. And then we have the wayfinding as well. So I would like everyone to you to think about this and start to form your vision. Because remember the visions. This is almost scary how well our visions fell out. On your left, you have the new technique, which is uh, the tech paper in Sweden. And on your right, we have our local media in Gothenburg, Göteborgsposten. And these are quite exactly the same two papers that I showed earlier. The only difference is the two papers before we have made by ourselves. This took us two years to accomplish. I, I will just start off by, I would like to introduce our new brand uh, that, as I not mentioned before, we are, are a consultancy firm today and we have grew to 40 people and that's, that has been a great business for us. 
but we have a lot of know-how in the whole chain of BIM right now, and we need to start looking into new business models. And I encourage every one of you here to experiment with your business model towards digitalization. So we will release our SyncAX platform, which is a new platform for us to make, uh, to test and experiment with new business model within our business. And the first outcome of this will be the SyncA Digital Twin, as we use as a platform for facility information. And we have, the past year, we have been mapping one million square meters of real estate that we are now kicking into this platform. So, and it's a shame that we don't have, uh, that we don't have more property owners here today, because as Matthew said, those are the guys who really need to be interesting in this. As for my final word, I would just like to remind the real estate owners, the property owners, that in the future, the real estate owner who has the best data about the facility will be the one who's leading the market. And I think Jonas could sign in on this as well. Thank you.